So I got the camshaft out. It's fairly impressive. It's a, definitely a, a large unit for a small engine. Yeah, took a little bit of angling to get it out. I had to remove the gear off the crankshaft first and then wobble and wiggle it. And the problem is I got a seized up intake valve so I can't, I couldn't rotate it around to get to where the timing mark lines up. One interesting feature on these, the uh, you can't you can get the end two uh, valve tappets out, but you can't get the middle two out without compressing a valve because they hit one another there, go all the way over, but it's still not disengaging. So I'll have to uh, since my intake valve seized, I'll have to compress the exhaust valve, or you know like uh, put a pry bar in it and get it to open that way and then slide this over far enough to get this one out so that's kind of a unique feature to these opposed engines oh, that was uh, a little harder than uh, I was expecting I had to use a pry bar here and get in there and push the valve forward but then I had to uh, hold it there I got a open end wrench there had to pull it all the way it would go, take the pry bar out because it was taking up space and then I was just barely able to get the, the intake tap it out so I labeled them here, I got to call them this cylinder number two and this guy number one so I get intake and exhaust one and exhaust two in this case you want to make sure you keep your tappets all going back in where they came out of there for uh, proper valve adjustment. Now I guess I move on to connecting rods and crankshaft. So I removed the, uh, I guess you call it the side uh, cover there, off the outside to get at the connecting rods. So you can get them from the end and from the bottom. So spin it over here. So I was able to get a socket on the near one and break it loose. But you can't do you can't get your socket in this direction, so then you have to angle it around the other way here. I'll take that crank back again. And then it's better lighting here. Rotate around so you can get the ratchet in that way. Then you can use uh, also a uh, box end wrench to uh, loosen it up. I don't know how a person torques these things. I'll have to be looking at the. Once I can figure out a model number for it, I'll have to be looking at a manual how a person gets a torque wrench with a socket anywhere near those. So these uh, engines have the, some peculiarities to them there. So I got the first piston out here. The uh, bearings in the rod look good. Um, you look at it this way though, you see that it's been sitting in some water. There's about half an inch of water in the bore. See the line right up the piston there. Now the rings are broken, so that's good. Wouldn't want to have to buy a new piston or rings or anything for it. Some water in the bore there. It's one of the main reasons why I decided to tear this down. If you uh, let it sit, and this one, it did actually pit the bore a bit uh, in this area here where the water was sitting. Uh, there's tiny pits, but for my purposes, it'll. If I ever get the thing running, it should run fine. Maybe smoke a little, but so I got to wipe all the water and penetrating oil, everything out of the bores, get them all cleaned up there. And next thing is mine is to get the, the second connecting rod off of there. Well, got the second piston out. It's got some rust on it from I don't know rings or whatever. Yeah, crankcase and some 
rust colored discoloration in there, but its cylinder looks a lot better than the other one. And uh, got the crankshaft here, it's in good condition. Gotta admit, uh, the crankshaft from this is a lot more impressive than one from a big synchro balanced one cylinder, like 13 horse or something. Um, now I uh, took some measurements. It's a 3.437 bore and 2.31 stroke. So that makes it, uh, I guess, a Briggs model 42, 42 cubic inch. And indeed, the uh, connecting rods say 42 on them. So uh, apparently that's what it is. And there's a notch in the top of the piston there. That goes to the flywheel side of the engine, if I recall correctly. And then you've also got a little uh, piece on there that lines up with the, uh, it's like a match mark on the, on the both halves of the connecting rod. And they face uh, outwards, so you can see them. Yeah, they face outwards, opposite to that notch in the top of the piston there. So just little details. I I mentioned some of these because uh, it's possible I'll review this video when I uh, go to assemble this engine so it'll help me uh, as well. So anyway, hope you've uh, uh, I don't know if enjoyed is the right word but uh, watching the disassembly of this uh, larger uh, uh, two-cylinder uh, Posed Briggs lawnmower engine. I don't uh, get into too many of them this large. Um, that's the first opposed to that I've taken apart. The only bigger engine in the air cooled engines I've torn apart was that V4 B Wisconsin. But uh, anyway, so uh, hope you found it uh, interesting at least on uh, how these uh, larger uh, opposed two cylinder engines are uh, put together.